Welcome to LEM 2. Today again we have Ravi Raj with us and uh, we will again be learning engineering mechanics. Today we will be discussing something related to resolution of forces. Ravi Raj, what do you think you understand by resolution of forces? Uh, if, for example, a question is raised of forces, right? There are four type of forces. You can say you can distribute into four parts. One is a single force. If a problem is posed where there exists a single force and we have to calculate what is the effect of that force, right? For that purpose, a single force will give you a single reaction, therefore a single resultant. Then there exist, for example, two forces, right? Last time we have discussed about uh, law of parallelogram. So law of parallelogram is available for solving this type of problem. Okay. If there exists a three forces, then we have to go for the Lemmy's theorem. Okay. And the last is if there exists more than three forces, then we have to resolve those forces into X and Y components. For example, if this is a force, as we know for defining force we need its point of application, magnitude and direction. For example, theta is the direction for the force and magnitude let's say 1 kN or 1 newton. In that case, if we have to resolve this force into X and Y component, it can be resolved like this. 1 cos of theta and the vertical component will be 1 sine of theta. The angle with respect to that will be your cos component okay. and the second will be your sine, sine component. component. So this is the resolution of the this forces. This is basically theory. So we are today discussing resolution of forces. I will pose you the first problem. Are you ready? Yes, sir. Okay. The forces which meet at one point and their lines of action also lie in the same plane are known as option A, coplanar concurrent forces, B, coplanar non-concurrent forces, C, non-coplanar concurrent forces, D, none of these. Your time has already started. So forces which are having uh, the line of action, so I think uh, the first option which is the coplanar concurrent forces hmm. is the correct answer. The reason is that coplanar means lying in same plane and concurrent means passing through single point. If this is a point, if all the forces passing through that, it is considered to be a concurrent force. Hmm. And coplanar means lying in a same plane. So if this is a that plane... That means as if we are, it's lying in the same, same board. Plane. Yes, means sir. you are writing on the board. So it's in the same plane. Same so plane. all these forces are lying in the same, same plane. Okay. So fine. concurrent coplanar forces. That okay. is the correct answer. Okay. So line of action is nothing but this is a line of action of this force. This is the line of action of second force. Okay. So as your question, the answer is A, coplanar concurrent forces. Are you sure about that? Yes, sir. Definitely? Yes, sir. Okay. So your answer is perfectly right. Coplanar concurrent forces, option A. Should we go on to the next question? Yes, sir. Okay. This is effect of force on a body depends on its option A, direction, option B, magnitude, option C, point of application, option D, all of these. Uh, if uh, you have to go for this question, I think the correct answer will be all of these. Reason is that for defining any force, for, the, for example, this is a force. Mm -hmm. for, for defining this force, we need its magnitude, its direction, and its point of application. So force is nothing but a vector quantity. There are two types of quantities, scalar quantity and vector quantity. The quantities which are defined by its magnitude and direction considered to be vector quantity. So force is a vector quantity. So for defining any force, we need its magnitude its direction and its point of application. So all of these is the correct answer for this particular question. Okay. So you are going with option D. Yes, sir. All of these as the correct answer. Yes, sir. Are you sure about it? Definitely. Definitely? 100%. Should we take it? Yes, sir. Okay. Ravi Raj, you are again perfectly right. All of these forces, all of these is the correct answer, wherein direction, magnitude, and point of application is important. Raviraj, I remember one example. I, my teacher used to teach me when they used to 
uh, teach engineering mechanics. In that example, he had mentioned that, imagine that you are sitting in a bus, okay? And the bus uh, suddenly stops. Okay. The driver tries to start it again, but it doesn't start. Ultimately, he tells that you just push the bus. Yes, sir. So one wise man just gets up from his seat, goes near the driver's part, and just tries to push it oh. from inside. inside. But the bus is not able to move a single part. Then the driver says, not from inside, you go outside. Yes, ma'am. I'll sit inside and you push. So the person goes outside, then pushes the bus, and the bus moves in the desired direction for some time. So the point of application is this force is always acting externally. Yes, sir. Is that clear? Yes, sir. So Unless and until you have some external agency to put in, then only your action would happen. For that, you would again require magnitude and you require the direction. direction. Okay, that example has remained perfectly in my mind. Yes. So, whether you remember that in that fashion? Yes, sir. Okay, definitely. So, we have discussed something about force. We'll go to the next question. Are you ready? Yes, sir. Okay, okay. the next question is, a man of weight 60 kg is standing on a ladder at slope 1H is to 3V. Then the components of weight along the ladder and normal to the ladder are A, 558.36 Newton, B, minus 558.36 Newton and minus 186.18 Newton. C, 186.37 Newton and 558.37 Newton. Or D, 558.37 Newton and 186.18 Newton. I think, Sir, so, you require some sort of calculations for this. It's yes. Not yes, sir. that simple. It, I think so earlier were much simpler. Yes, sir. So, uh, as the framing of the problem is there, so one horizontal and three vertical. So this is the uh, three vertical. So this is a ladder, right? So it rests on a, uh, let's say, wall or something like that. So one horizontal, three vertical. A man is standing over here, for example. So its weight component is acting in downward direction. So it is having weight 60 kg, right? So 60 kg should be converted into Newton by multiplying by 9.81. Right? And the component part is acting in downward direction and they are asked what is the this value. So along the ladder and normal to the ladder they, they have asked. So first of all I will calculate this angle. So this angle should be calculated by taking the tan uh, inverse of 3 divided by 1. So it comes out to be when you calculate tan inverse of opposite divided by adjacent, so 3 divided by 1, so it comes out to be 71.56, so theta comes out to be 71.56, so if this is theta 71.56, this angle is 90, so the remaining angle you can calculate, so addition of the three angles in a triangle is 180 degrees, so 180 minus the 71.56 plus 90 degrees, so the remaining angle comes out to be 18.44. So the remaining angle is com comes out to be 18.44. Now, as we have discussed the resolution of forces, so this component which is acting in downward direction should be resolved in two directions. One is along the ladder and second is the normal to the ladder. So angle with respect to the vertical is given. Therefore, your vertical component is cos and horizontal component is sin. So rather in going for this direction, we have to go for this direction. So your along the ladder will be your cos component. So 60 multiplied by 9.81 cos of 18.44 is the force which is acting in the direction of along the, ladder. along the ladder. And across the ladder will be your force is 60 multiplied by 9.81 multiplied by sine of 18.44. Now, uh, what about the direction? 
right so we have to consider one sign convention that if force is going in upward direction consider to be positive force is going in downward direction consider to be negative if it is going to the right it is considered to be positive if it is going to the left consider to be negative so this is the just sign conventions to be used to solve such kind of problems so when you calculate that i think the answer comes out to be when you calculate 60 multiplied by uh, 9.81 multiply by cos of 18.44 it comes out to be 558 it is acting in di downward direction so answer is negative. negative again it is in downward direction so minus of uh, if you calculate 16 multiply by 9.81 multiply by sine of 18.44 it comes out to be 186.18 oh. so again it is minus 186.18 uh, so the correct answer will be option b so b is the correct answer i think so a very very tedious task yes <laughs> compared to your earlier problems so you have to resolve different different forces yes sir. why did you take this component i didn't understand so this is a normal to the uh, your ladder so they oh. are asked uh, the question in question they are asked what is the uh, component of force which is acting along the ladder and one is normal to normal, the ladder normal so normal to the ladder will be this so it will it will make a 90 degree angle oh, okay. to normal to the ladder so, so that's correct. why you have taken this as this component you have considered yes sir okay that's a big learning for me also yes I just check on whether your answer is right or not. Right, Raj, I think so. You are smart enough this time. And your answer is perfectly right. <laughs> and engineering mechanics is a very, very applied science. Day to day, you will be seeing many, many things which are there. If you are able to s resolve these forces, that is the most simplest subject and the most interesting subject to learn. So happy learning engineering mechanics. Thank you very much. Thank you, Ravi. Thank you, sir.